Okay, let's move on. And let's play someone else. Wow, so many people challenging. Um, I'll play a sub. If, if you're a sub, your name should appear purple. If your name is not purple and you're a sub, you should use the sub challenge command and it will give you further instructions how to make your name purple. So I'll play Ellie33, the first sub to challenge me. Uh, good luck. Maybe I'll, I'll keep playing Gambits, why not? We played once before and it was a draw. Okay, time to get revenge. Ooh, can I play a Gambit here? I could invent a Gambit. Is d5 a move? Feels like it should be a move. It's probably dubious, but... Okay. Oh, I could have taken then played d5. But that would be probably just a bad Halloween, because I, I would need my knight here. If I'm white, I'll try and play a Halloween Gambit. Subway 109, bonus 10, do you still have an echo? Apparently not. I think the echo only happens when I'm streaming from my Mac. Uh, because my Mac is a bit weird. Mr. Waffle Truck, thanks for subbing. Whoa, what are these knights doing? Let's take a pawn. <laughs> All four center squares are occupied on move five. That doesn't happen so often. This knight's hanging. Uh, bishop c4 is logical. I'm trying to internalize what's going on. I could play bishop here and then it'll be more of a party. Also play bishop here. Let's play bishop e6. Just to kind of diffuse uh, attack against f7. Also attacking the knight. The bishop's defended though by this knight. So this knight can move somewhere. Probably f4 or e3. Eric needs to do a stream on Halloween and just play the Halloween gambit. I was just thinking about that. I mean, the thing about Halloween is you can't, you can't play it against everything. Only in like four knights positions. Okay, d3 looks questionable. But why? I mean, okay, this knight's hanging, but this knight's hanging. So usually the rule is you, you just like kamikaze the piece that's hanging and then take the free piece later. So knight takes f2. Hmm, anything better? Oh, let's take f2. It's a very strange opening so far. Okay, I'll take this thing. I'm in a good Cover. mood today. Thanks so much for a thousand bits. And congratulations in being for being in a good mood. Hope it lasts. And we have new subs. We have Mallory underscore exe. And Bonoza. Really appreciate that cover. And the new subs. And Zefcat! Zefcat rating with a party of 84. Thanks so much, Zefcat. Shout out to Zefcat. And shout out to Zefcat viewers. I really want to take a free knight, but then I get punished. You could take the rook. You could Botez Gambit. Is it too early for a Botez Gambit? Probably. We'll do a Botez queen trade. Whatever that means. And then... Oh, I wanted to castle queenside. It won't let me, though. I should defend the pawn. But rookie one is coming. Hmm. Okay, let's start with this. Oh, Zefcat says do it. Well, too late now. Sorry to let you down. I'll play king d7. It's a weird square, kind of, for the king. But it frees the e8 square and gets closer to connecting my rooks. There's a couple dozen gambits just within the king's gambit. Yeah, there's probably gambits within every opening. Um, a few days ago, I played the Falkbeer counter gambit against the king's gambit. It's fun to play counter gambits. Zafcat, resubbing, gifted by Kevin C. Wong. Thanks, Kevin. And thanks, Zafcat, again, 
for being who you are. Let's develop more pieces. Um, bishop d6 looks decent. e3. So white wants to do this and then eventually win the pawn. Let's restrict white. This is very common in chess. When they want to play b4, you, you crush their hopes and dreams. So it's equal material, even though I tried playing a gambit. And it's actually quite positional. I have a pawn gaining space, but this is also a potential weakness. I mean, yeah, this is kind of expected. I could play f5, just try and harass a rook. Try and shoo the rook away from attacking my pawn. There we go. And now maybe rook e8, and we'll trade off everything. Not sure whether trading one pair of rooks or both pairs of rooks is preferable. Let's trade off one pair, because a battery was scary. And, okay, positions like this... Okay, position like this I have to move quicker. But sometimes the first question to ask is, what, what does the opponent want to do? I'm not seeing anything, like, so immediate for white. So I think I'll just make some improvement. Play a4. Let's play a4. Especially with the, the presence of the dark squared bishops, I think it's important for at least to try and fix opponent's pawns on dark squares. Now that might not be relevant after the bishops get traded. Let's play h6, preparing the sacred and beloved g5. Imagining some position where my king is centralized, this pawn is still supported. At some point I want to have pawns on c5 and b5. Wow, so we could be trading a lot. So I have a chance here to imbalance things a bit more. I could take with a bishop. And then like rook f7. Take with knight too. Let's take with bishop. Sometimes to outplay lower rated players, you need to create imbalances. So now it's knight versus bishop. Not sure which piece is more effective. I mean, my knight is nicely placed. The bishop, even though it's in the center, it's kind of short on squares. I might play g5 soon. And then like rook e7. I'm sensing we're going to have some endgame time scramble coming shortly. A lot of G5 emotes. The anticipation is real. G5 on its way. Even if white plays H4, I might still play G5. H4. Uh, sure, why not? And if the h file opens, it might benefit me because I could quickly access it with rook h7. Okay, so tension is being left. Rook e7, there's this move. Now I have g4. That's interesting. I think I'll play rook e7. It's very forcing. Calculating bishop f6, um, g4. King f2 takes, takes, then h5. And the bishop can't touch my pawns. Let's not mess up the move order. Check the king's glued to the rook. And then I'll trade rooks. I could also play rook e6. Rook e6 is actually a bit interesting. Let's play rook e6. Yeah, just tickling the bishop. I think maybe with rook e6 I get some extra time, because if white's the one who takes, I get time activating my king. Wow, so many g5 emotes. 
Oh, because I actually played g5. Makes sense. So I have my pawns on light squares. Bishop can't touch them. And the king can't break through. The king is restricted by both um, both these pawns. At some point, I might want to prepare f4 and then create like some defended pass g-pawn. c3 is logical. Maybe time to take. Could trade everything. Hmm. C3 is probably a good move. <laughs> Trying to calculate some endgame. Takes, takes, king e6. I think the problem is pawn takes. Hmm. I have f4 in some position. Actually, it looks really interesting. Okay, let's start with taking. Calculating f4 in this position. Or king e6 first. Maybe king e6 first. And then f4. Oh, this is... I'm, I might be sacking two pawns in the endgame. This looks very questionable. But I... It's, it's so nice, like, positionally. Okay, there's increments, so I won't flag. I just gambited two pawns in the endgame to just damage white structure, because I have light square control. One pawn fixes these two pawns. Uh, I can start with c6, I think. Yeah, so all these squares are in my control, so white can't really make progress with the pawns. And then I think h4 or d4 will ultimately fall. And this pawn is a constant worry for white. This is a very interesting endgame. Wow, can I just promote? No, I can't, because f5. So let's stop the pawn first. The king can't run too far this way, because then I do promote. Also, I'm winning h4, and I'll have two connected passers. This might just be winning for black. Let's take. And I'll move back, and my king will be optimized. Hmm. I can do this. In 12 seconds, should be enough time. I can just push. Like, this is a very nice setup. Like the knight, the king, the pawn restricts everything. The bishop, it's an outpost bishop, but it's not so effective. It doesn't stop the pawns. You can do this, just promote. The king is literally stuck. You can even like, oh wow, I'm just mating in two moves? I can promote to bishop even. And if push, I just take. That's so funny. It is just forced mate. Yeah, the, the king has no escape here. Wow. Even if I if I didn't have a g-pawn, and my pawn was like on h7, it's still... Oh no, I need the g-pawn to control f3. That was fun. That was like a positional endgame gambit. Maybe I'll put that on YouTube and call it positional endgame gambit. Let's go back. Two pawns. Yeah. Yeah, first the d-pawn, then the f-pawn. It was all about, like, just the light square control. And this pawn is just, it's worth a lot more than a single pawn. So, for the future people watching on YouTube, I hope you enjoyed that game. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment share the video on Reddit, and I'll be back in the future.